it's automation zone. Exciting stuff. So I have some components here. I don't have everything that I need at the moment, but I've got a few things. Um, power supply, a driver for my um, stepper motor. And that's a stepper motor which has got a gear box on it. And I'm a bit worried that it's not going to be large enough. Um, and that may be the case, but uh, we will find out. Hopefully with the gear box, it's going to um, sort that problem out and give it more torque. And I've got a, a it's like a dolly wheel, not a dolly wheel, a um, caster wheel. And um, what I've done so far is converted a doorstop. Uh, I don't know if you can see that very well. It's got a hole in it. I've drilled a hole in it. I put two bearings inside either end and some spaces in between so that this becomes like a little solid rubber roller and you'll see why I've done that later. And I have this uh, inline clamp as well and what I'm hoping to do is to make a bracket that goes over this and screws in the front and then becomes like a 90 degree angle. I've got to get the balance point somewhere and this ends up being able to obviously squish. We're going to have this flange that's going to be bolted onto that wheel, which then will go into this shaft. So that's my motor drive wheel. So what this essentially will do is hopefully I'll be able to push it and engage it into the observatory and then disengage it when I want to use it just manually. We'll see how we go with that. Um, there's more components to do. What's not here is um, all the electrics, um, my little Arduino unit and uh, a case I've got to put everything in, but uh, we'll get around to that one step at a time. So my plan, first step I want to do is, I'm probably going to measure this and I want to cut a piece of timber board to go in here to give me something solid to mount this inline clamp on, which is going to then push hopefully stepper motor with the drive wheel up into place. So. That's the plan. And with any luck, uh, once the stepper motor's on this drive wheel and the drive wheel will push up against the timber up here and this other wheel I'm going to clamp on top so that the force of the two will hopefully spin the roof around as it turns. But I have to have quite a bit of torque and I'm hoping this Hoping this little clamp is going to be strong enough. It says it's got about 125 kilograms of force, but we will see. I might have to buy a different clamp. This is all experiment, could all go horribly wrong. And if it does go horribly wrong, you won't see the video. <laughs>
So my hole has to be bigger than that. Now, I'm close. You've got to get lucky sometimes, I guess. Touch wood. Well, I didn't get lucky <clears throat> because I don't have a drill to fit that. But I do have that one, which is slightly bigger, but I'm hoping it's not too big. It's enough to cover the flange there. As long as it's not, gives me enough room to be able to put the screws in, I should be okay. Okay, moment of truth. Not bad. Probably a tiny little bit of filing out on this little fella. But I'm happy with that. Now to work out where to bend it. Next tricky part. So I'm pretty happy. That gap in there I will have to fill. But the once I drill a hole through here where the thread goes, the nut would almost be that height, maybe a washer or two and then that way it'll be hard up against there and there'll be no flex in this at all. These end up being five millimeter metric screws I had lying around, which was nice and handy. Now it's time to um, find where I'm gonna drill this. So that flange just needed to be widened a little bit to take some bigger screws. So they're yeah, fairly chunky screws and I'm hoping that this is gonna hold well enough. I guess we'll find out. So there's actually bearings inside that caster wheel and um, I screwed I screwed it up before because the bolts were too long and were hitting the bearings so and it happened to take the bearings out and I'm now using the other side of the caster wheel because I screwed the other side but lucky I got a second chance at that. So there's two grub screws on that flange. One of the grub screws screws into the keyway on the shaft and the other one just screws onto the shaft. I tried to find a 12mm keyway uh, flange but I could not find one anywhere. Um, so I'm just hoping that this will hold. But I guess time will tell. So the battery run out and I'm not sure where I was up to. I think I was about to balance this. So what I've done while charging the battery, I have found my balance point by balancing on this bit of timber, which is ended up being right here. And I've drilled my, um, I've drilled a hole there for that bolt. Um, so that then ended up going onto my um, inline clamp. So the other thing I did while the uh, camera was getting charged was cut away this with the angle grinder. This shaft here can fit up like so. And it's probably a good thing you didn't see me cut that away because it would have been disturbing for some viewers with me with an angle grinder in an observatory cutting away next to expensive telescopes. 
Now I have to put this on first. So the idea, if it works, is to mount this when it's fully out and touching the underside of the, uh, the timber on the observatory roof because I can always adjust the tension uh, by adjusting this bolt afterwards. So we'll try that and we'll see. The other thing is um, I had to make this I had to make another one of these plates to um, get the correct distance I needed uh, for that to center evenly with that bracket there. Let's give it a go. Alright, so hopefully I now just have to adjust this, at least this way I should be able to disengage and use the roof manually when I need to and then engage it. I'll also be putting this other roller wheel on here and it will be also bolted into this so that the two are clamped, essentially clamped together with this hopefully makes uh, gripping this timber better but we will see so I scavenged through the uh, shed and found an old bracket I can repurpose and um, so what I've done is I've mounted my rubber bearing onto that now and the idea is for that to clamp on the under uh, the overside of that timber that's going to be wedged between the drive wheel um, which the drive will be underneath, for example, where my thumb is, and this will be wedged at the top and uh, hopefully give it a bit of pressure. I'm going to also have to uh, put these nuts in there just to give it a bit of distance clearance from the rotating timber section, uh, just so it doesn't rub against it. Pretty good. Tight. And then still rolls okay. And then hopefully when this engages, that will work. Now, the next thing I've got to do is put a bracket in here to stop this turning when I turn back, so I'll keep that very straight. Good, the motor's not moving anymore, which is good, that's what I want. Right, not much I can do now until I get this motor running, see if it's actually going to work. I do have some more pressure, I can clamp this up harder if I need to. Um, we'll see how we go, it could be a complete failure, who knows. I don't have another solution at the moment. 